Well, hello everyone. We are um, to, we are on March seventeenth, uh, Old Testament Book of Numbers, uh, continuing with uh, chapter thirty one, verse one through chapter thirty two, verse forty two, <clears throat> and it reads as this: Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, "Take full vengeance for the sons of Israel." Um, on the Midianites afterwards you will be gathered to your people Moses spoke to the people saying arm men from among you for the war that they may go against Midian to execute the Lord's vengeance on Midian a thousand from each tribe of all the tribes of Israel shall send you shall send to war so there were furnished from the thousands of Israel a thousand from each tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. Moses Moses sent them a thousand from each tribe to the war, and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, to the war with them, and the priests and the holy vessels and the trumpets for the alarm in his hand. So they made war against Midian, just as the Lord had commanded Moses, and they killed every male. They killed the kings of Midian along with the rest of their slain, Evi and Recham. And Zur and Hur and Reba, the five kings of Midian, they also killed Balaam, the son of Beor, with the sword. The sons of Israel captured the women of Midian and their little ones, and all their cattle and all their flocks and all their goods they plundered. Then they burned all the cities, their cities where they lived, and all their camps with fire. They took all the spoil and all the prey, both of man, man and beast. They brought the captives and the prey and the spoil to Moses and to Eleazar the priest and to the congregation of the sons of Israel to the camp at the plains of Moab, which are by the Jordan opposite Jericho. Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the leaders of the congregation went out to, the, to meet them outside the camp. Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds. Who had come from service in the war. And Moses said to them. Have you spared all the women? Behold these caused the sons of Israel. Through the counsel of Balaam. To trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. So the plague was among the congregation of the Lord. Hmm, sounds like. I'm kind of starting to pick up maybe when he's. Sometimes a plague is even the poisonous people. In the group. So anyway continuing with 17. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman who has known man intimately. But all the girls who have not known man intimately spare it for yourselves. And you camp outside the camp seven days. Whoever has killed any person and whoever has touched any slain, purify yourselves, you and your captives. On the third day and on the seventh day, you shall purify yourselves, every garment and every article of leather and all the work of goat's hair and all articles of wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the men of war who had gone to battle, This is the statute of the law which the Lord has commanded Moses. Only the God, only the gold and the silver and the bronze, the iron, tin and the lead, everything that you can stand, that can stand the fire, you shall pass through the fire and it shall be clean, but it shall be purified with water for impurity. But whatever cannot stand the fire, you shall pass through the water. And you shall wash your clothes on the seventh day and be clean. And afterward you may enter the camp. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, You and Eleazar, the priest and the heads of the father's household of the congregation, take a count of the booty that was captured, both man and, and of animal, and divide the booty between the warriors who went to battle and all the congregation. Levy a tax for the Lord from the men of war who went out to battle, one in five hundred of the persons and of the, all the cattle and of the donkeys and of the sheep. Take it from their half and give it to Eleazar the priest as an offering to the Lord. From the sons of Israel's half, you shall take one drawn out of every fifty of the persons of the cattle, of the donkey and of the sheep, and from all the animals and give them to the Levites who keep charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. Moses and Eleazar, the priests, did just as the Lord had commanded Moses. 
Now the booty that remained from the spoil which the men of war had plundered was 675,000 sheep, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and of women, of human beings, of the women who had not known men intimately, all the persons were 32,000. The half, the half, the portion of those who went out of to war was as follows. The number of sheep was 337,500. And the Lord's levy of the sheep was 675. And the cattle were 36,000, which from which the Lord's levy was 72. And the donkeys were 30,500, from which the Lord's levy was 61. And the human beings were 16,000, from which the Lord's levy was 32. Moses gave the levy, which was the Lord's offering to Eleazar the priest, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. As for the sons of Israel's half, which Moses separated from the men who had gone to war. Now the congregation's half was 337,500 sheep and 36,000 cattle and 30,500 donkeys. And the human beings were 16,000. And the, from the sons of Israel's half, Moses took one drawn out of every 50, both of man and of animal, and gave them to the Levites, who kept charge of the tabernacle of the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then the officers who were over the thousands of sheep, the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds, approached Moses, and they said to Moses, <coughs> Excuse me, Your servants have taken a census of men of war who are in our charge, and no man of us is missing. So we have brought as an offering to the Lord what each man found. Articles of gold, armlets, bracelets, signet rings, earrings, necklaces, to atonement for ourselves before the Lord. Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold from them, all the kinds of all kinds of wrought articles, all the gold of the offering which they offered up to the Lord from the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds was sixteen thousand seven hundred and fifty shekels. The men of war had taken booty every man for himself. So Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold from the captains of thousands and of hundreds and brought it to the tent of meeting as a memorial for the sons of Israel before the Lord. Chapter 32 Now the sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad had an exceedingly large number of livestock. So when they saw the land of Jazar and the land of Gilead, that it was indeed a place suitable for livestock, the sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben came and spoke to Moses and to Eleazar the priest and to the leaders of the congregation, saying, Adaroth, Dibon, Jazar, Nimrah, Heshbon, Ela, Elaha, Eleli, Sabah, Nebo, and beyond, the land which the Lord conquered before the congregation of Israel is a land for livestock, and your servants have livestock. They said, If we have found favor in your sight, let this land be given to our servants as a possession. Do not take us across the Jordan. But Moses said to the sons of Gad and to the sons of Reuben, Shall your brothers go to war while you yourselves sit here? Now why are you discouraging the sons of Israel from the crossing over into the land which the Lord has given them? This is what your fathers did when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up to the valley of Eshcol and saw the, the land, they discouraged the sons of Israel so that they did not go into the land which the Lord had given them. So the Lord's anger burned in that day, and he swore, saying, None of the men who came up from Egypt from twenty years old and upward shall see the land which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, for they did not follow me fully, except Caleb the son of Je Jephunneh, the Kizanite and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have followed the Lord fully. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel, and he made them uh, wander in the wilderness 40 years until the entire generation of those who had done evil in the sight of the Lord was destroyed. Now behold, you have risen up in your father's place, a brood of sinful men, to add still more to the burning anger of the Lord against Israel. For if you turn away from following him, he will... Once more, abandon them in the wilderness, and you will destroy all these people. Then they came near to him and said, We will build here sheep, hold, 
sheepfolds for our livestock and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will be armed, ready to go before the sons of Israel until we have brought them to their place. For our little ones live in the fortified cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return to our homes until every one of the sons of Israel has possessed his inheritance. For we will not have an inheritance with them on the other side of the Jordan and beyond because our inheritance has fallen to us on this side of the Jordan toward the east. So Moses said to them, if you will do this, if you will arm yourselves before the Lord for the war. And all of you armed men cross over the Jordan before the Lord until he has driven his enemies out from before him and the land is subdued before the Lord. Then afterward you shall return and be free of obligation toward the Lord and toward Israel. And this land shall be yours as a possession before the Lord. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sin will find you out. Build yourselves cities for your little ones and sheep foes for your sheep. And do what you have promised. The sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben spoke to Moses saying, Your servants will do just as my Lord commands. Our little ones, our wives, our livestock, and all our cattle shall remain there in the cities of Gilead. While your servants, everyone who is armed for war, will cross over in the presence of the Lord to battle, just as my Lord says. So Moses gave command concerning them to Eleazar the priest and the Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the father's household of the tribes of the son, sons of Israel. Moses said to them, If the sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben, everyone who is armed for battle, will cross with you over the Jordan in the presence of the Lord, and the land is subdued before you, then you shall give them the land of Gilead for a possession. But if you will not cross over you with your armed, with you armed, you, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. The sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben answered, saying, As the Lord has said to our servants, so we will do. We ourselves will cross over armed in the presence of the Lord into the land of Canaan, and the possession of our inheritance shall remain with us across the Jordan. So Moses gave to them, to the sons of Gad and to the sons of Reuben and to the half-tribe of Joseph's son Manasseh, the kingdom of Shihon, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of God the king of Bashan, the land which is its cities with their territories, the cities of their the surrounding land. The sons of Gad built Dibon and Ataroth and Aroer, the Athroth, Sophan, and Jazer, and Jobahay, Jobahay, and Beth Nimrah, and Beth Haran, as fortified cities and sheepfolds for sheep. The sons of Rumid, Reuben built Heshbon and Eliela and Kiriathayim and Nebo and Baal Meon. Their names have been changed to Sibma and they gave other names to the cities which they built. The sons of Machir, the son of Manasseh, went to Gilead and took it and dispossessed the Amorites who were in it. So Moses gave Gilead to Machir, the son of Manasseh, and he lived in it. Jair, the son of Manasseh, went and took its towns and called them Havoth Jair. Noba went and took Kenath and its villages and called it Noba after his own name. All right, so we'll continue on to Psalm 35, verses 1 through 8. And here it says, Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of buckler and shield and rise up for my help. Draw also the spear of the, and the battle axe to meet those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those be ashamed and dishonor who seek my life. Let those be turned back and humiliated who devise evil against me. Let them be half chaff before the wind with the angel of the Lord driving them out. Let their way be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For without cause they hid their net for me. Because cause they dug a pit for my soul. Let destruction come upon him unawares and let the net which he hid catch himself and to that very destruction let him fall. All right, and we'll quickly go on to Proverbs 12 verse 1. 
And it says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. Amen. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's the end of March 17th. Thank you. God bless. And I hope to see you soon.